Welcome to the Steam Smart Pat podcast, the show that's all about Steam, the blockchain based social media platform that's taking over the world. Here with me today is Steven. Well, hello, guys. I've improved my voice quality and my video camera quality. So now you guys will actually hear what I have to say. And Gabriel. Hey, and yeah, there are not two of me. This is actually an other person. Um, this is Jake. I hired him recently on Steam it with Steam dollars and flew him down here, paid for the ticket and everything. So now there's like two of us. So that'll be fun. Awesome. And I'm George Donnelly. So pretty excited. This is our second episode. Uh, we've got a pretty good tech update. I, I'm still a little nervous, just like the last one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you sounded much better. Marvelous. So uh, let's jump right into this week in Steam. Yeah. So one of my uh, favorite articles from this week is uh, by Mauritsu. It's uh, about category popularity and total payouts. Yeah, I don't know if you guys uh, have seen this, but basically he's, he uh, charted over time the uh, categories that are the most popular. And, you know, no surprise there. Number one is Steam. Number two, introduce yourself. Uh, three and four are life and photography. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I noticed that uh, <clears throat> Steam, it's actually been really popular for, for a lot of photographers. There was somebody who, I don't remember uh, how much he made. It was quite a bit, but it was just from posting his wife doing a pretty, pretty uh, model-y pose. But I was just like, wow, there was no um, words or anything. It was just the photo. 2500 bucks or so when I checked it. Yeah, that's kind of surprising, but girls do sell. Don't they? Oh, sex sells, Morty. Yeah. <laughs> girls always work, you know. When are we going to have, you know, like on Reddit, they have girls gone wild, right? So when are we going to have like... Steve that was here before you were here, George. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. But I mean, like, a t does it have a tag? Yeah, actually. Oh. Uh, girls Gone Steam, it was... <laughs> Something that popped up very early, like three months ago. Oh, okay. Oh, Problem wow. was there was only one chick on there. And once you saw everything, like that was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and she it. was actually from Reddit, I think. She just kind of migrated over because there was some extra dollars or something going on here. And I, some of the guys tried to make it a thing, but it didn't really take off. So it just kind of died. Yeah, it's got to huh. be self-perpetuated like everything else uh, on this platform. So... It'll, uh, it'll change once we bring in a slightly more mainstream crowd if, in fact, that uh, this does catch on to a, a that Oh, dear meeting. God, that has to happen. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it will, or at least blockchain technology and Steemit being one of the main uh, providers of access to other technologies through the blockchain. I very much think that's going to happen. I, I wonder what, what is going to be the event that is going to catapult the platform to the next level, you know, of, of user signups and user engagement. Um, I think adapt, uh, or or uh, mobile adoption is, I think the big one, uh, mobile, mobile, everything, mobile programming is the thing that all programmers are focusing on that, uh, focusing on at this moment. Um, it's just a, a growing, um, platform. So when we get ours or when Steemit gets a mobile app, you know, regularly used, I think that's when, that's when it'll happen. That was a big deal with Bitcoin in, in 2013. It really took off once blockchain.info became a thing. Like once people could pull out their smartphone and easily use Bitcoin and transfer it back and forth, that, that made a huge deal. And then from then on, it was just a matter of mentions by celebrities, uh, stories on the evening news, mentioning Bitcoin, things like that. So I think it'll be the same thing with Steam. Yeah, but in our case, I mean, in the case of Steam, it's, it's, it's not so much like the use case is not that much paying for things. Right. You know, I think the main use case is um, getting paid for your, your content, you know. So right. I wonder if it won't take a different path. Well, I think uh, the main barrier for us right now is like with 
with block with with Bitcoin, it was the ease of use with blockchain dot info, and with us, I'm bringing a lot of people on board and getting them to use the blogging platform. But then when they get paid in Steam dollars, those Steam dollars just sit in their wallet and don't do anything. They don't want like they feel intimidated by taking that next step to set up an uh, an account on an exchange and start trading for Bitcoin and using those platforms and stuff. So getting over that hurdle is kind of our our thing. We have to grease those skids a bit. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I mean, that's a that's a very easy thing, I think, for. Um, a, a small tutorial you can show people how to do this in like two minutes to convert it's not speed. easy enough though it's easy for us but okay. for the average valley girl coming in off of facebook right it's a whole different animal right um so what do you know there's probably loads of steam dollars for somebody who ever wants to make that one an easy thing there's a free idea that's what we're doing over here at steam center <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Gabriel had a post. He's, he's going to launch a business like that where he's going to help people um, You to go straight from Steam Dollar to, to like a, a payout via PayPal or Western Union. Isn't that right? Yeah. So yeah. The, the idea is to not provide like an ongoing option for people to do that because ultimately we want them to get using Bitcoin. We want them to get comfortable with cryptocurrency but they need that first payout. They need that first little bit of money in their hand to see that this is real so that they take it seriously. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that we're going to facilitate that first payout via PayPal or Western Union. And then one of the conditions of receiving that payout through that method is that we do a live call with them and walk them through, hold, hold their hand and walk them through the whole process of setting up an exchange account, trading with Bitcoin and all that stuff. So. We'll help you with that first transaction, but you, but we'll also set you up so that you're self-sufficient from that point on. And I think that'll be enough for the average person. Once they get their hands on and wrap their mind around it, it becomes almost obvious to them, you know, in retrospect. But, you know, like I'm thinking about that book, uh, Crossing the Chasm, you know, like that mainstream audience, they're they're kind of far away yet, you know. Like, okay, you know, uh, Steemit has definitely had some success with early adopters, you know, and I think it's it's starting in on that second layer of people. I forget the name of it because I, to be honest, I'm not really an early adopter. I really wish I was, you know, but I think it's, uh, I think it's actually innovators and then early adopters is the actual name for the curve. And I think we're now getting to early adopters. So what's the name of the first group? Uh, innovators. Oh, okay. All right. And that's like 2.5%. I was literally just watching an official government video breaking it down in the business sector. And you know what? It's actually good material, even though. Yeah. They label yeah, something, right? Something, right? We, should, yeah. we should look at who that next group is, you know, because I think that, you know, after early adopters, because I guess that's, that's where we are now, you know? Yeah. They're the show me the money category. That, that's who they are. Uh, they oh, are really? the show me the money category or show me the benefit. Boom. Um, and I can, you know, they're the smarter people who can actually then figure out, Oh, if that's the benefit, I can then do these things. Um, you know, we're the, you know what, you don't need to show me the money. I think I got it already. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we dive in, but they're the show me the money category. And I've already gotten actually several people, uh, on board a, a, one of my buddies made like 10 bucks with his guitar videos um, and you know they were they were not really interested and then I we did this podcast I told them what we made and they were like okay let's uh I'll start signing up and I got like 10 people um, on board and I'm sure it's it's just going to slowly trickle in the more successful we are and they are that's good. That's good. Yeah, because they just cut the the initial sign up bonus again from seven to now five five dollars. So that's, that's also partially, I think, because just the value of Steam has dropped. Right. Mm. Oh, it's, okay. It's roughly still the same amount of Steam at dollars. It's just you know the values changed, gone down a little from that two dollars point last week's show to one forty. I believe was the last time I saw it on. When market cap? Yeah, that's the the second article that I, I picked for this week uh, by uh, JL seven 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 called "End of Week Long Steam Price Downtrend." You know, so why why is the price falling, guys? Uh, 
supply and demand, buddy. Same as ever. <laughs> right, right, it's supply and demand, and until the uh, until the demand and supply is leveled out, and then more content is being created, that's when we'll start seeing that growth again. But right now, it's just money spreading downhill. That trickle down economics, as some people love to call it. So everybody's cashing out. Is that is that it? Do you think? There's always a lot of people cashing out, but it's just a matter of whether or not the inflation can keep up with it. Mm -hmm. So there's more cashing out going on in relation to the money that's being created. Yeah. I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. Personally, I understand what the uh, future of steam likely will put each dollar at in the future. So I'm just, I'm just holding. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. So wait, you <laughs> said the inflation, there's not enough money being, um, no, there is. Oh. Sorry. I mean, it's the in inflation drives the, the price down and also the cashing out does also. And mm -hmm. there's, there's too much of both at the, the moment compared to what we're used to. I mean, you got in at a time when the price was very high compared to what we were used to before. Oh, yeah. I mean, when I first joined, the price was like pennies or whatever like 20 cents or something like that and i remember watching it i was like how do i get steam it's not listed on the markets Damn, yeah i'm gonna lose that and then on this one. when it did it's like when the first payout happened back on july 4th that's when the price really spiked it went all the way up to like five bucks there for a minute <laughs> hmm. yeah that was that's where the show me the money people started getting in there hey so steven you had a really interesting article that you picked for this week. I was actually a little bit jealous because I wanted to pick it. <laughs> but uh, why don't you tell us about that? We lost your audio there, buddy. Who's did you? Oh, you just muted yourself, Stephen. Well, it was a it was an article about uh, the politics of negative voting. I think from and, down the man. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, oh. oh, there you are. There you're back, Steven. <laughs> Whoa, that was highly unusual. Um, okay. I'm sorry about that. Uh, okay. So you're, were you referring to my politics of negative voting article? Yeah, that that's the one. Yeah. Tell us about it. Okay. So the politics of negative voting, I actually have, um, a semi, I, I thought it was a fantastic article in relation to whales keeping each other um, in check in regards to self voting, as well as um, people having more weight in their votes uh, proportion to whales. Um, and I've actually found this to be the case in a uh, 2004, I was part of an online community that had a, a similar version of the reputation and credit system of their own to, for checks and balances of wealthy people and people who are popular. Um, and what I found was that the uh, politics of voting, just like in real life, people like people they like more than they like people with money. They deal with people with money, but they listen to people they like. Mm, tribalism. Right. It's very, <laughs> very primal. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The the whole tribal thing, it really, it really upsets me sometimes. But, um, <laughs> uh, it sounds like hey, there's a, people, there's you a, know, people are a, people. Right. There's, but there's a social conditioning, uh, solution for that. Not necessarily saying that is the answer, but I'm saying it is a solution. It's possible. It has been tried. Mm. You know, uh, nationalism is that kind of idea is like taking the tribal mentality and just spreading it super over a very large population. Yeah. Um, but you know, when you get a tribe like, uh, like uh, the science subreddit, um, they're, they're kind of a tribe. Okay. Those people are very focused on science and on, on facts and on building arguments and things. So much so that if you don't have like a reasonably logical or rational comment, like you're, you're, it's deleted, you know? I can get behind that kind of tribe, you know, but it's the kind of tribes where like they, uh, you know, people are engaging in, in utter bullshit. Sensationalism. And yeah. And it, it's excused because, oh, it's, it's, you know, it's old Mike, you know, he's okay, you know, and I'm like, but, but it's a lie. 
no, no, it's, it's Mike. Don't worry about it. We know, we know, you know. <laughs> No, uh, I I very much think that the tribal mentality is going to occur no matter what. People are going to be people. They're going to look for leaders until they stop looking for leaders and start doing a little inward reflection and realize that, you know, they know enough about themselves to help themselves. They don't need to look externally. Um, but until that happens, the natural tribal mentality of – finding people who are similar to them, making things that they like, and then projecting their inner beliefs onto that figure. It's a, you know, it's a sort of idolatry at a, at a primal level or primal psycho psychological level. Yeah. But this, this post uh, brings to mind a, a proposal from last week, I think. I don't remember the name of the, the poster, but he said that uh, he proposed that anybody who downvotes ha or flags has to post a comment explaining their their downvote, or he's he and he's going to organize a little army to do it. He's going to go around, and this is a person with a high reputation rank. Uh, going to go around and uh, uh, flag all the guys' posts to make a point. And, uh, and people in the comments were like, you know, this is a good idea. It, you know, I'm glad you said it. You know, it has to be, it has to be said. It has to be done. You know, and I was kind of like, well, wait a second. <laughs> You're proposing to combat abuse by engaging in oh. even more abuse, you know? Using the system that um, they've identified as the problem. And rather than creating a solution for that system, they are wielding the system against those they find abusive and that's you know that's gonna create its own internal political its own internal political system um and i think like you said tribal so it's not going to be like so divergent uh left right it'll be a pockets of people who disagree and stuff it's so interesting how that's developing on steam it um mm. and it and it developed on all that that forum I mentioned way back uh, in 2004 with likely kids and young adults who were just learning Photoshop. Um, but the same kind of concept happened where you just saw pockets of people who were familiar with each other and literally they're sharing the same cyberspace, but they're familiar with each other versus the other people they're sharing cyberspace with. Which mm. is, uh, that's so fascinating to me. Yeah. Gabriel. There seem to be just certain personality types like, they tend to become like the leaders of y unions and stuff, you know, like they have a little bit too much time on their hands and they're good at organizing people and they're likable and stuff. And I don't know. Cause like I've, there's, there's been a couple of different people that have tried to rope me into groups like this on steam it over the past few months. Like, Hey, we should all get together and go and flag people who misuse tags or something. And I'm like, we don't need organized little armies like this to do like, the system is built the way it's built to accomplish what its developers think should be accomplished. We don't need other people taking it upon themselves to fix things that they think are broken because they're not broken. They're just not what you think they should be. <laughs> right. And that's why those, uh, those kinds of systems are going to inevitably develop unless they, you know, uh, identify with anarchism or a similar philosophy of non-intrusion into other people's lives. You got to remember a lot of people on this are not explicitly um, of that philosophy. They are people after the dollar and, you know, that's going to attract a lot of people. Um, and likely the people, like I said earlier, who they identify with a, a group. They like to identify with a group. Mm. Yeah, this this topic of flagging, though, it's like I get flagged on my stuff and I welcome them as market signals. Like when I see a flag, I don't freak out. Oh, no, somebody's trying to do me wrong. It's th the audience. The market is telling me something. I, I need to pay attention, you know, and take it as a signal and improve upon it, you know, and I don't know. I, I think they're valuable. I think the more feedback mechanisms we have, the better the market does a really good job of fixing problems it doesn't like. Um, and the reputation system is an, is an extension of that market. It's that interface where, um, yeah, you're giving me a little bit of money, but you're also telling me you won't in the future with that, uh, with that flag. And in some cases it takes away money if they're powerful enough. 
Yeah, here's a question for you guys. Are you afraid to flag? Because uh, I came across a post this morning. I was going through the, the new queue trying to find, um, you know, high quality posts so that I could be one of the first ones to vote it up. And I came across one post that was a word for word copy of, I believe it was a Coindesk article that was actually written by um, a, a fellow uh, Steemit user. And I verified this, you know, I went back and forth and I copied, pasted, and you know, it definitely was. And, uh, and I was going to flag it. And I, th you know, and so I'm thinking, I'm, my fingers over the flag button, I'm thinking, well, you know, is somebody going to come and harass me for having flagged this, you know? I think it's like the easiest way to think about it is like if you're in a town hall, right? If the people flagging have to like stand up and be seen, which you kind of do on Steam, it like everything is transparent. Everybody who flags can be seen for doing so. You just have to be willing to stand up and explain yourself if you're called on it. So I'm not afraid to flag, but I will only flag if I think it through ahead of time and I know that I'm prepared to answer for it. Hmm. Yeah, there's a, there's something about actually being accountable and, um, and explaining yourself rather when you explain yourself, uh, when you have to explain yourself, you're intellectualizing why you're able to do that. And that means more to people than just a flat out. I don't like it. Emotional response downvote. I'm on my way to go downvote and emotionally unleash on more posts. Um, but when you have to explain it, you're also um, opening yourself up to the criticism and, you know, that, that reputation of yourself, you now have to um, decide if you stand by what you think. Hmm. So do you want to, do you want to give us your second post, uh, Stephen? Uh, I put why steam it is not a utopia as my, and why you should be happy. Um, that it's not a utopia and I utopia is just a uh, pretty much Greek for nowhere doesn't exist um, and we've got a connotation of it uh, but it, yeah, steam it's just not a utopia it is going to be the basis of another primal system as we've kind of been discussing as a theme here um, of watching old systems build themselves within the Steemit platform and they're not automatically this futuristic everybody get together and create mentality. There is still people who are selfishly using the system and that's just fine. They can do that. They will also suffer the repercussions of what this system allows with that kind of greed. Yeah. And I think, um, a lot of people's minds are still in this old paradigm of, uh, you know, getting a job. You know, you go to school, you get good grades, you interview, you get a job, you keep your boss happy, and you keep getting paid, you know. And the new economy isn't like that. You, there's really no guarantee. And I think this is why there's such a groundswell of support for basic income because people are like, oh, my guarantee, where's my guarantee, you know, because you, you, you find yourself doing things like driving for Uber, you know, where there's no guarantee at all and they're cutting, they're, there's downward pressure on your wages and things like Steam It where like, okay, all of a sudden you're, you're essentially an artist, you know, and to uh, be an artist, uh, you have to put in a lot of work. It's like starting a business too. You have to put in a lot of work before you see any profit. And, uh, you know, you, you put in, um, you know, you write 20 articles or post 20 photographs or whatever, and you're getting like one cent uh, per uh, post. And that, that's like a serious ego hit. Right? That's so, <laughs> that's such a, like, oh no, I poured my heart into that. And that's what they think of my heart? Yeah. <laughs> Well, Jake knows a thing or two all about that, don't you, buddy? Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Why don't you quickly run through kind of your background and how you came to all this? Oh, man. I started writing novels about 10 years ago, and I'm working on my fifth one now. Just published my fourth one, science fiction. And yeah, I'm anxious to see how, how I can, you know, use Steam it to not just promote myself, but, you know, get feedback and stuff like that. And I'm, 
a uh, Reddit I know has a lot of um, subreddits where you can actually get feedback and kind of, you know, use the community to help you push yourself forward and everything. And I'm trying to figure out how that might work on Steam it. And oh, yeah, I think there's it. a lot of good potential there, but I still have to kind of delve into it. You know, as a, as a, as a, an author myself, um, I have to say that the idea of, there's this idea in writing where you, you give your writing to a group of people and you get their, their feedback or criticism or whatever. And then that's supposed to make your story better. Yeah. I, I, I that's that idea in my opinion is complete bullshit yeah. okay. because it's like, you know, it's like uh, what good decision was ever made by a freaking committee. Okay. Right. You know, and, and a work of art, like a novel that, that has, that comes from a vision, you know, and that vision is only going to get muddled when you hand it over to a committee, you know? So true. So, yeah. yeah. So I, you know, being an INTJ and all like authenticity is a big thing for me. And I know it's not for other people, but so that, 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 that's a bias, I guess, that informs my perspective, you know, I'm, right. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to get a vision across. So my rule is always, uh, if, one or two people are giving me problems with it. You know, I, I stick to my own vision. I say, no, I'm going to, you know, this ending is mine. I'm going to keep it this way. But if I'm getting, you know, 10 people, 20 people are all saying the same thing. Then I kind of have to look at myself and say, you know, is it worth sticking to my vision or is it, you know, right. trying to make it more, a little more mainstream kind of thing. And then I have to, you know, look at myself more in that position. But well, I, ju I just say screw them in that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's always a struggle. Like, well, I'm not writing for you. <laughs> yeah. So there have been quite a, the, you know, there has been quite a bit of use of uh, Steemit to post fiction, you know? And I thought that was interesting. And some of it has done qu quite well. I've seen some people uh, getting, you know, $15, $20 or more, you know, for episodes. And, uh, you know, my, my introductory post, I, I, I really, I got to say, I botched my introductory post, okay? On Steemit, you know, you got to like, you know, open up, you know, do a little bit of open heart surgery, and <laughs> your heart, you know, and, and upload it to the cloud, you know? All the feels. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really do anything about, like that because I don't in, inherently think that I'm interesting. And I think the people who drone on about themselves are like the height of bore, boredom, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I was just like, you, you know, sell yourself. Yeah. So I was just like, okay, here I am. And you know, let's, let's just drop that topic. I don't want to bore you with it. Here's a, here's a free book. I'm going to be sharing with you, you know, a uh, free novel, you know, and it, it did pretty well. I, I got almost $900 for that post, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I think there's a market, you know, for creative works on oh, Steam. Yeah, that's happen. awesome. I think it's actually what a lot of people have been uh, really receiving is they've been just using their vision of past work that they didn't really get too much credit for. And now they're, they're giving it to people that really appreciate creative spirit or appreciate the creative spirit. Um, and, you know, to support that, they're like, here, do more, do more. Here's some steam. We want more. And in that sense, I really appreciate this community because there are a lot of people who are very focused on not just being, you know, productive and, uh, and friendly and helpful, but who are also, you know, want to genuinely get to know the other people in the community and genuinely support other genuine people. I think from the standpoint of uh, an author, um, something that will probably end up working well on Steam, it is not just providing the finished product, but more of like a behind the scenes look into the, the life of the author and the writing process and all that kind of stuff. So if, if you have to travel to some location to research something, you know, you could do a post about that. Or if, if there's some inspiration of somebody that you knew growing up that made it into a character or something, you could do a post about that, you know, all those kinds of things. Oh my God, too many feels. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take all that. I hate it when people do it too, because it's like, you know, I just want to read the book. I don't want to know like, you know, <laughs> the history of it. <laughs> I guess I'm cynical so that way. People latch on to authors, not just the the product, you know, they, 
when they follow, you know, Dan Brown or something, it's like they follow his work and they follow like what he's doing and everything. And they try to stay up with it and stuff. It's, it's weird, but it's true. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, and that takes me back to the whole tribalism thing, you know, which just, you know, does not compute, you know, <laughs> and that, and that whole 100 and you just have no heart, George. That's yeah. it. <laughs> Indeed. Now, there's that 150 people that uh, you can apparently evidently have as a relationship or whatever. Your limit of social interactions is about 150 people. I, I'm i willing to challenge that. Um, but then again, I think that when you're talking about psychology in every subject, you're, you're talking about a bell curve. Um, some people fall outside of the bell curve. Some people adhere to the bell curve. Most people fall somewhere in between. Um, and so of that 150, I think that the people who try to identify with these authors that way are just the people that don't have a large social network um, of people they identify with for, for whatever reason, either they don't like people or, you know, they don't get along with a lot of people, for whatever reason, but they do obviously identify with that author. And I'm sure the author appreciates that. They're, it's like, dude, that again, that's my soul and that's my heart and you guys are appreciating it. And so again, uh, flip side of that coin earlier, Steam, it's giving to those people. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. You mentioned the part about the, the people who, who get real passionate about um, an author or somebody are the people who don't have a large social network or whatever. Because at times in my, in that, like as an INTJ, I'm prone to just isolate myself, you know, right. like Understandable. just shut myself in a room and the rest of the world can F off, you know, you got books behind you. You're happy. <laughs> <laughs> and so in, during those periods where I just isolate myself, like, you know, I'm a little uh, embarrassed to admit it, but from time to time I have found myself like just falling for some celebrity, you know, like, wow, this person's so fascinating, you know? And then later on, I catch myself like, oh, my God. You know, uh, the very you thing know. I hate. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Yeah. It's a, very, it's a very interesting way the psyche works and tries to seek out relationships um, in any capacity. Find people that are like them in some way. And the more people you expose yourself to, the more you get to choose who uh, you're familiar with. You get to see all the variety and you get to go – Oh shit, I'm special, but not special. There's a lot of people like me, and then there's some quirks about me. And so we go to my favorite saying, everybody's special, not special. Welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Jake, uh, what, um, how, what are your plans, you know, as a creative person, as a writer, what are your plans to use uh, Steam to, you know, as a creative platform? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm looking forward to the day where you, you know, click on the Steam at homepage and it's, you know, artists everywhere. I think that's going to be awesome, you know, photography and writing and everything. And yeah, short stories. I'd really like to start doing some of that. Um, jump into that. I've never actually done a short story before. It's all been novels and everything. So I think this is the time to start that. Um, poetry is another thing, another possibility that I think might work. I know it's always hard to sell poetry, but this might be the place to, you know, try it out and get some feedback and stuff. Um, but yeah, feedback would be great. Just any sort of, I mean, even the monetary feedback on, on what's working, what's not. Um, mm. I think it'll be really fun to explore and, and yeah, jump into. So. And that's just the stuff that he's doing for himself. Then, then there's all the stuff that I'm going to have him do for me. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> it's like, we have a huge schedule lined up of basically Chile has every kind of set for every kind of movie in it that you can think of. It's got a desert, it's got penguins down south, it's got rainforests, it's got everything. So yeah, for like for everything that we write, we have to go and scout out these locations to film in. We're going to bring our drone with us and do up nice little like almost like tourist bureau kind of videos to show the process and everything and like there's going to be a lot of trailer fun shoots. Oh, trailers. Yeah, for sure. Cause we're kind of doing things backwards in that we're, we're bootstrapping the trailer first and then we're giving a whole bunch of options on the website of projects that we're doing. And if somebody comes along that wants to get themselves a executive producer credit and they like a concept and they want to get behind it and help back it and stuff, then they can do that. But the first, 
priority right now is just laying out the options for people. So shooting trailers is a big thing that we're going to be doing this year. We're going to start by uh, just jumping into treatments, get, you know, 10 really good treatments out there and, um, and trailers for each of those, I think. And, yeah. That's a great idea. Uh, Cause I think um, steam could be a really good kind of crowd fund- funding platform, by the way. All right. So uh, the question of today, the, uh, the purpose of the episode is to answer the question, where does steam money come from, right? Because all the, all you skeptic out, skeptics out there are like, well, I get free money for signing up and then I get more free money for posting and curating. Like, where does it come from? Where does well, it come from, guys? You, you can ask the same about US dollars. Where do they come from? The answer to that is a little bit disturbing if you're not already familiar with it. Uh, the Federal Reserve essentially prints it into existence and loans it to people um, there's nothing backing it whatsoever. The same is true with Steam and every other fiat currency. The same is true with Bitcoin. It doesn't come from anywhere. It is created and it's distributed to people for accomplishing a task and essentially earning it. As with Bitcoin, it's a whole bunch of people dollars. that are mining. And essentially, that's just solving math problems. It's a giant math competition. And the winners of these math competitions are awarded this newly created Bitcoin. Steam is very similar, except instead of a math competition, it's a blogging competition. So the proof of work, as we call it, is subjective rather than objective. With the math competition, there are right answers to the math problems and there are wrong answers. So it's easy to distribute things that way. With this, it's subjective. So some people like a thing, some people don't like a thing. That's where the votes come from. So it's the same deal. They come from nowhere. They're created by the network and distributed to the winners of this blogging competition. So Bitcoin, okay, got, uh, audience, all right, here we go. Bitcoin is for math geeks. Steemit is for uh, liberal arts majors, okay? Bingo. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, but okay, so that's where the money comes from. It comes from nowhere, which, which makes me think of uh, that movie, what movie was it? There's a movie in which a guy uh, invents a spray can uh, thing that it freezes dog poop and then the dog poop turns into nothing and disappears. Have you, have you guys seen that movie? It's got some big comedy actor. Oh, man. No, it may have been a smaller part of the overall movie, but everybody was like, like the thing that, like his business went really well because, you know, everybody hates to pick up. Dog, dog poop, you know, and everybody's like, just spray it and it's gone, you know. But the thing that brought down his business was in the movie, people were like, but where does it go? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like they couldn't make sense. Where does it go? You know, and he was just inundated with people asking him that question, you know, and begging for an answer, you know. So, um, OK, so we know the money comes from nowhere. But what about the value? You know, yeah. Why are people trading? their Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency for Steam. And why are they investing their time? Because like anything else, it's useful. And really that's the only source of value is anything that we deem to be useful, anything we want. So dollars, you can't really do anything with them. There, there's no tangible value to them, but they're useful. They assist trade. They make it so that somebody can buy a thing from somebody else without carrying a bunch of goods with them and doing barter and stuff. So it's useful in that sense. Steam, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, it's all the same deal. It's just useful. Steven, do you want to add something? Yeah, we have a, we're, it's subjective value theory. And, you know, it's not going to be useful and it's not going to have value to anybody that's not used, uh, using the network. Um, but as soon as they have something that's useful that they can't sell or, you know, is less valuable outside the network, they might be, um, they might consider coming into the network to, capitalize on the potential value that they hold so it's just really a different uh community that values things differently than the mainstream market a lot of people aren't familiar with subjective value theory they're not used to bartering they're not used to thinking that what they think should be uh the fair price is worth anything so they just are trained to give money to corporations that have people trained to do so um and then so the Bitcoin or so the Steemit platform and just cryptocurrency in general is unfamiliar because you're getting back to the roots of economics that a lot of people are just straight unfamiliar with. 
Yeah, and so um, how, you know, how is it useful? You know, what does it do? What problem does it solve that is so valuable, you know, that the ecosystem uh, went, uh, peaked at a, at a recently at a valuation of like $400 million, right? To become the number three uh, cryptocurrency after Bitcoin and Ethereum, I believe, right? What does it do that's so useful? Well, first of all, it gets, it pays you to post your content and to curate content, you know, to upvote. You also get paid for comments. Um, it enables you to build a community of people who are paying you to create essentially art. You know, what else? What, what else? What other problems does it solve for people? We've barely scratched the surface here. I have a friend in Sweden who's been talking to me off and on for a year. And he's in this really tough situation where he's like shackled to his parents and he feels like he doesn't have options. And he was driving for Uber for a while, but then the Swedish government shut Uber down and he just feels like he's in this trapped spot. And then, so I kind of dragged him into steam it and said, okay, there's two innovations that have popped up in the last few years that I wish I had when I was a kid, because it would have allowed me to run away from home and, and thrive, you know, at a very early age, but they didn't exist. Now they do. Now you have these options. One of them is workaway.info. That's where you can find hosts in any country around the world that will give you room and board. If you come and work for them, that's freaking amazing. And the other one is steam it, which if you use it properly, and you document your, your travels, your progress, your adventure, your story, people will pay you as you go. So, I mean, these two things put together, I mean, you have no excuse to feel trapped. I mean, you can get up and go anywhere you want and be self-sufficient now. And another thing um, is the, uh, you know, I think that's, that's super important. I mean, you can earn money, you know, just doing your thing. But another thing I think that it adds value that we haven't even begun to really see yet is uh, what is related is micropayments. So because there are no transaction fees uh, on the Steam network, suddenly it enables um, micropayments, you know, which is something that really it's kind of failed on Bitcoin because of the transaction fees. I saw a post on the Bitcoin subreddit recently where a guy had like $20 in Bitcoin uh, left over at an exchange. And because he had assembled it from a bunch of different places, he had like 64 different inputs for this $20 worth of Bitcoin. And so to send it uh, out to, you know, to get it out of there, he had to pay uh, something like a 30% transaction fee because the size of his transaction was so big because of all these inputs. But that problem doesn't exist in Steam. Good point. So, okay, well, that's where the money comes from. And uh, if anybody has any questions, you can uh, shoot them to us at uh, me at georgedonley.com. That's uh, my email and I'll bring your questions on the show. You can also ask questions on uh, Twitter uh, or of course on Steam, you know, just tag it uh, Steam Smart Podcast. Now uh, we're gonna be doing a, a thing here on the show where we highlight uh, creators on Steam, who we think are unsung, yeah? So basically everybody, the over reputation level 60, you're sung, you're all sung out, <laughs> you're sung. So we're looking for people under 60. Um, and today my guy is N Tomino, who is a, um, at N Tomino, so that's letter N and then uh, Tomino. He's a venture capitalist at Runa Capital, and he's had a bunch of interesting posts. Uh, the latest one about the fact that uh, Steam is not actually censorship free. Would you guys say that Steam is, is, is censorship free or censorship proof? Um, I think we kind of answered that earlier today. Um with the with the reputation system uh you know you get a, if you get flagged too much uh your post gets hidden and goes away i think that's a built-in censorship uh an answer to the market yeah and he so he and tomato makes this i think an incentive um insightful point you know that uh it's just not uh, steam is just not subject to centralized censorship it's decentralized censorship you know Bingo. And that's another, yeah, that's another one of these factors that 
you know, as we were talking before, makes Steam very cool, but not a utopia. Precisely. Um, and we've heard it from everybody. One man's utopia is another man's dystopia. That's actually directly in that article that I also pulled from. But we've all heard it before that article. <laughs> So do you guys, do you guys have somebody you want to call out an unsung creator? You know what? I brought mine on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, what's your username, Jake? Uh, my name, Jake Vander Ark. Okay. V-A-N-D-E-R-A-R-K. Awesome. What about you, Steven? Uh, I want to give a shout out to my buddy. Um, what is he? It's my roommate. So I want, I uh, got him onto the podcast or not the podcast, but I got him onto the platform and I'm trying to find what his name. Good old, is. good old nepotism. Yay! Yeah, so I have to, I have to do the whole <laughs> tribalism for the win. Oh yeah, no, I have to, I have to fall into this. I'm not, I'm not special. <laughs> oh, where is he? Where is he? You're special to us. Aw, you're <laughs> special. Everybody's special, not special. Just like everyone else. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Oh, here it is. And his name is the Yellow King. The Yellow uh, King. The Yellow mm. King is the username, Nicholas Davies. He's a guitar player, just a musician. He's really good. Um, I mean, I'm not just I'm not just saying he's just really good because he's my roommate. He's really good. Oh yeah, we totally believe you, Steven. Check yeah. him out. <laughs> no nepotism involved at all. <laughs> precisely. Precisely. We and are was- very against tribalism on this show. I- I am a free agent in that recommendation. <laughs> Show us your fingers. They're crossed, aren't they? Oh. <laughs> yes, we're founding the Against Tribalism Tribe. <laughs> I love it. I would join it. Yeah, I bet you would. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So that's, that's the, the major part of our show. So now our last part of the show is called Steam It Up. And that's where we just ran and rave or talk about whatever we feel like. So uh, I'm going to kick it off. There's uh, on our last episode on the YouTube video, there's a uh, commenter, very reasonable commenter. He has some, you know, disagreements and, but he's very reasonable about that, which uh, I highly respect. I he it. said that steam is like social security. What do you guys think about that? you pay into anything i mean that's just i'm not gonna I, I think that's just the way life works you pay into and work in systems and give energy to systems that you bet will be your best bet in the future to take care of you when you're not able to take care of yourself i think that's really the case for basic human psychology we seek that that's why we find organizations and we build relationships so before money it was based off of how much effort in a relationship we put in that we got out of it. It's very basic. Um, and so, yes, sure, steam it's like Social Security, but so is paying into a 401k at your job. I'm going to say there's a pretty fundamental difference between them, and that is that using steam it is completely optional. It's completely voluntary, whereas Social Security, you're roped into it against your will. That's a f- very fair point. Definitely. Yeah. And the point I made to him, among others, is that uh, steam, it, steam, there is some fundamental utility in the system that exists just by the act of its creation. As you know, we talked about earlier, the different uses it has, the, so, the solutions it provides. Um, and so, of course, that's part of where the money comes from. But Social Security offers no net utility and which may confound some people, but the fact is that I pay $100 into Social Security, and on the other side, how much of it reaches, uh, you know, your grandma? I don't know, but it's not $100. It's less. It's less because you have bureaucrats, and I uh, have to confess, uh, my dad, who is uh, not, not a very agreeable person, I haven't <laughs> talked to him in 30 years, Oh, he wow. worked for Social Security, despite the fact that he was an arch conservative, you know, Birch Club member who, you know, you know, you know how all that stuff works. Oh, yeah. He worked for Social Security. And 
he brought home a salary. Where does that come from? That comes from the hundred dollars that I pay in. And so, you know, there's no social security creates no wealth. It loses wealth, but steam on the other hand does create wealth. Government systems by nature, all government systems by nature are parasitic. They require the success of those who are outside the system to funnel money into the system. Um, and that's just kind of the way all government systems work, where Steam it being a free market platform um, creates that abundance where people are now suddenly taking a resource that is naturally available to everybody and i'm going to say natural in the sense in cyberspace there is anybody can go with a computer can plug into the steam network or the steam network and start farming steam dollars um they can start solving blocks or they can start posting their own content but they're not going to be rewarded if they don't create their own content they, i mean maybe somebody might try to be clever and steal stuff from somewhere deep on the internet and then try to reveal it um, and they'll get rewarded for that. But that only lasts so long. A lot of people though will actually just, and, and most people aren't even clever enough to do that successfully. So they'll just get freaking ban hammered really quickly by the reputation system. Um, and every, it kind of just forces uh, the world to create. And uh, that's just, you know, a basic abundant system. Amen. Yeah. So, um, any, any topics you guys want to bring up for uh, the Steam It Up segment? Um, I was chatting with Rock Savante earlier, and we were considering having him join us today, but he had to politely decline because he's actually putting together his own wedding right now. So I'd just love to give like a, a nice shout out to them and hope they have a great day. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, just a couple of days ago was your birthday, Gabriel. Happy hey. birthday. <laughs> yeah, I have this weird thing going where my birthday, the founding of my company, and when my girlfriend first came down here, all these things all just landed on the same day. All and now Jake here. came down on that same day too. <laughs> so it's, it, it's just a really convenient little racket I got going where all the days are just packaged into one. So I have one party and I don't have to memorize anything else. <laughs> <laughs> a big, a big experience. Pretty awesome. So uh, I was just, I just happened to cross the, uh, check the Steam It site and the top post right now is relevant to something we were talking about. It's uh, Steamy, which is a fully native iOS and Android apps for Steam. So the, and they have some screenshots on there. You can actually, uh, you know, log in and um, sign transactions. Uh, you can get push replies for uh, upvotes, follows. Very nice. Oh, man. Looks like I'm going to have to download that right this moment. It's, it's got a WYSIWYG editor for, uh, and it saves your drafts offline. You can import your photos from your mobile device. Uh, this, is, this is looking pretty awesome. This is a sweet, sweet app. Oh my gosh. These screenshots look really good. Oh. Yeah. Right on. I'm, uh, I'm a fan. And this is from, who posted this? Steam app. Which Steam, is Steam app. app. Mm. Sweet. We'll have to uh, have them on in like a week after it's been used a, a bit and see how it's going. Uh, yeah, they, I think they said the, the beta is coming out uh, soon. Not out yet. Okay. Uh, just a teaser. Yeah. Uh, and hey, they're man. being paid very well for it. Yeah, um, these, these, these oh, projects don't fund themselves. We have they to... They deserve it, though, you know? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. These, you know, when you create software, I think that right there is a big, uh, a, a big way to earn. Yeah. But I think for, for a project like this, their budget must be at least five times what they're earning on this post, which is currently at 5,000. This is just the first post. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Wait for it. And all the people that are going to flood in that are going to feel compelled to also upvote the post and, you know, give them that later way in the future. That's that right there is like, you know, those entrepreneurial multiple streams of income, like everything you post of quality is a stream of income that you mm. couldn't have had before steam it. 
Definitely. All right. Anything else you guys want to add uh, before we uh, end the show? Nope. All good. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, thanks everybody for listening. This has been the Steam Smart Podcast, the show that's all about Steam, the blockchain-based social media platform that's taking over the world. I'm George Donnelly. I'm here with Stephen Polsky and Gabriel Shear. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, please uh, come check us out at steamit.com slash at steamsmart.